Okay, I have to pop in here really fast by myself to update you mommy makeover fans really quick. And she sat by me and she was so cute and mature. She crossed her legs like she was so big. And she's looking up at me and telling me all these things about herself. And I was looking at her and I noticed these beautiful green eyes. And she just melted my heart. And as she was talking to me, I remember thinking in my dream, she doesn't even know that she's gonna be my little girl. Oh my gosh, it's gonna make me cry. Yeah. Get busy, get busy, everybody get, get busy. I need y'all to report to the dance floor right this minute. Today we are excited, but also, I don't know, this is just kind of tough. So, and here's why, we'll explain more. But before we get started, <laughs> make sure you subscribe down below, hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted when we post. Give this video a big thumbs up. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Okay, now let me explain why this is a little bit tricky. Because these memories and these experiences that I had in finding my, all of my kids, but for today's Lily are super dear to my heart and they are very little special treasures that I carry in my heart. And to tell all of you about these treasures is like kind of putting my little heart right here in front of you. See my heart? There it is. <laughs> so I have to ask all of you to not crush my heart because it's just gonna be out there for you. So be nice to me. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, we are going to talk about today how I found Lily. And this is part one because at the same time as I found you, who else did I find? Sadie and, and Luke. And Luke. So this is kind of like part one. I think I'll have a part two of this. So I have to back up a little bit. First of all, I just need to tell you guys that when I was a little bit younger than Lily, I had the opportunity to have a foster child, a little girl named Jenny, come and live in our home. My mom was fostering her. She didn't stay with us for very long. It was just a few weeks, but in that few weeks, I got really close to her. And I just knew that I wanted to adopt. And I have told you more about that story in the Q&A that I did with Benji. At the end of that, in that moment, I just knew that I wanted to adopt, that that would kind of be my mission in life. And so fast forward, and at this point I had, Kennedy was two and Cassidy was a little baby. And I won't tell you everything about this experience because like I said, sometimes these experiences are actually sacred to me. I hold them sacred. And so I won't go into detail, but at that time I had a really cool experience. So I knew that I needed to find a three-year-old little girl after I had this cool experience. And so I just kept my heart open, kept my mind open, thought, you know, when and it's the Lord's timing, I will find her. And so fast forward, about literally eight years had passed. And we were living where we're kind of in the city that we're living in now. We had just kind of moved from where we were living. And so I got a phone call and it was social services and they asked me if I wanted to still foster. And I said, I don't know, we just moved. I had just adopted Bridger and Journey and I'll tell you how I found them later, but we had just adopted Bridger and Journey. I had six kids, was very busy. And so I told him on the phone, nope, I think I'm good. I think I'm gonna wait a little while until I foster. Well, that night I had a dream and in the dream, it was just a very interesting dream. One of those dreams that you, when you wake up, you really remember every part of it. And so in the dream, I was walking through this big, kind of like a hotel and I was kind of being tempted with different things. Like the first temptation was someone asked me if I wanted a baby and I said, no, no, I'm, I'm looking for a three-year-old little girl and this baby was so cute. But I was like, no, no, I'm looking for a three-year-old. And I kept walking and other temptations would come like other things I was busy with. I, someone wanted me to start decorating some Christmas trees because at the time I was decorating Christmas trees for a living, like um, for people. Anyway, so I kept going and kept being tempted to do different things and find this little girl. And I kept saying, no, 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 I gotta find her. And so eventually I made my way down this hallway of the hotel and I got to the door and I opened the door and I went into this room and there was a lady and she had gray hair and glasses and she seemed kind of like into 
intimidating to me. And this other little girl, there was three, was sitting on her lap. And I walked in and she said, now you don't want a baby, do you? And I'm like, no, no, I told them that I don't want a baby. <laughs> and she said, okay, well, meet this little girl and so I met this little girl in my dream and she came and sat by me there was like a little couch in this hotel room and she sat by me and she was so cute and mature she crossed her legs like she was so big and she's looking up at me and telling me all these things about herself and I was looking at her and I noticed these beautiful green eyes and she just melted my heart and as she was talking to me i remember thinking in my dream she doesn't even know that she's going to be my little girl oh my gosh it's going to make me cry <laughs> anyway and i just sat there and looked at her and thought she's going to be my little girl and then i woke up from that dream and that morning i called back that social service worker and said yes i actually want to foster and i am still open to that and so fast forward and you'll see what happened during that time when i talked to you about navy but that was emotional even just talking about that so fast forward and i was going in to speak with all of the people in the foster care kind of like their board that decides who what kids go where and so i'm sitting out there and feeling very emotional me and benji are like talking to each other we're holding hands we're feeling very emotional because we're gonna go in and talk to them about why we're still wanting to even foster and adopt I mean, we had six kids and we're thinking they're gonna be like get out of here you already have enough children <laughs> and so our hearts were really like oh pounding and a lady came out to get us and this was the lady that was kind of the kind of the supervisor of this group that we would be talking to she had short gray hair oh, and, and glasses. glasses yes and also very intimidating, and I about died. I, I started crying right there, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, I'm fine, and I walk in, and they asked me this question. They said, we see that you already have six children that you've adopted to from Russia. What makes you want to adopt? And I could have said a million different reasons why, and you know what I said? I told them the truth. I said, well, you know what? I had a dream and I'm looking for a three-year-old little girl. And you're gonna think I'm crazy for saying that, but I'm just gonna say it like it is. I'm supposed to find a three-year-old little girl. And they all kind of looked at each other and I don't know, some of them might have chuckled a little bit. And some of them, like their jaw dropped to the ground. Like, I cannot believe you're being so honest right now. <laughs> like that. But the lady who was in charge, the same lady from my dream, she said, you know what? You would be surprised how often people come in here and they've had really neat experiences or things that have let them know that they have a specific child or a child that they need to find through foster care. So we understand and I was blown away. That's part number one of what happened, okay? So the same sweet lady, I'm not gonna say her name, but the same sweet lady, she would prove to be exactly how I found my Lily. So I have to kind of like in between here, there was some sad and hard things that happened. And during that sad and hard things that happened, I was kind of at my wits end. And I was basically on my knees asking Heavenly Father to help me to find this little girl. He allowed me to have these experiences to know I needed to find her. And I was just really tired of waiting to be honest. And as I was sitting there pouring out my heart to Heavenly Father and crying, this song was playing on our speakers. And so I got up and wiped away some tears and I, I just had the feeling that I needed to listen to this song. So this song that came on the speakers was actually the song called Held by Natalie Grant. And it said this part, this is what it means to be held, how it feels when the sacred is torn from your life and you survive. This is what it is to be loved and to know that the promise was when everything fell, we'd be held. And in that moment, I felt like I was being held, to be honest. I was really at a sad place waiting to find my cute Lily. And then it said, this hand is bitterness. We want to taste it and let the hatred numb our sorrow. The wise hands open slowly to lilies of the valley and to tomorrow. And in that moment, I knew that the little girl that I was looking for, that I would find her, and that Heavenly Father was holding this whole situation in His hands, and He was holding her and holding me, and I knew her name would be Lily. Please, you makes me cry. Uh, anyway, if I could go back and give myself a big hug in that moment because boy did I feel low but that just lifted me up and I could wait it said can you not wait just one hour and I was like okay I just need to wait a little bit longer so fast forward a little bit and I decided to let that cute lady that had kind of gray hair and glasses I kind of let her know this is it's hard to tell people these really important and kind of sacred 
things that you learn, I think, through the Spirit. But I let her know. I She was calling about a different placement, and I said, here's the thing. I even know she's gonna be three. I know she's gonna have green eyes. And now I even know her name. <laughs> and I completely expected her to be like, you're crazy, what are you thinking? But instead, this lady who was very intimidating, I respected very much, said, you would not believe how many parents even know the name of the child that they are looking for. And I was like, okay. And I said, but I'm not gonna tell you. I said, I don't want you to just find me only girls whose names are, are this name. I didn't tell her the name was Lily. I said, so just know, I know I'm looking for a three-year-old little girl, but I'm open to whatever. I don't wanna tell you even like the color of eyes. I don't wanna tell her name because I just thought I'm just gonna keep it a little bit more open. Partly because I was doubting, I was having a little bit of like lack of faith that you're gonna be able to find a three-year-old with green <laughs> eyes whose name is Lily. Like I thought, okay, maybe I'll just have to name her Lily when I find her, I don't know. Anyway, so she knew the experiences I had had. So in part two, I'm gonna tell you exactly how this happened, but I do have to just tell you one thing. It happens to have happened because I decided to call that lady at a certain time, certain day. Yeah. She's just gonna have to wait. I'm gonna have to wait till part two. Part two. And then guess who's gonna be sitting on the other side of me here? Sadie. Sadie. All right, guys. That was a lot to t get off my chest. <laughs> like I said, those are all very special things to me. So please appreciate them and honor them for the cool experiences I've had, which has been amazing. And I will let you know more and you will literally die at how this all came together. It's a miracle. Like every single adoption and birth is a miracle. This was a complete and total miracle, I'm telling you. All right, love you all. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Okay, I have to pop in here really fast by myself to update you Mommy Makeover fans really quick. I just wanted to let you guys know where I'm at and what I've been doing. So as you know, I had to have a second surgery just to correct more of the things in my back and things, but I'm doing really good. I'm feeling really good and I am super grateful for doctors who are able to do that. And so I'm doing really good. But during that time, it's put a little bit of a glitch in my walking routine and just a little bit of glitch even in my mental being able to really visualize and things as I've had some little down moments but in those moments I have thought of you to be honest like I think you know what I've got all these amazing women who are writing their amazing stories to me I need to buck up and get with that I'm gonna be okay and I need to look at the brighter side it all starts up here what you're gonna focus on and I've been trying to focus on the good things and so one really cool thing that's happened during all of this is my kids have also started like paying attention to you know just being a little bit more healthy a little bit more active drinking lots of water and all of those things which has been huge and my husband also who has been a Dr. Pepper like addicted to Dr. Pepper to be honest for years and years and years and always wants to get off of it but can't because he gets these headaches he's really addicted to it he has been off of it now for several weeks and that is so great because diabetes and all the other things you can get from having too much soda so I'm so proud of him that's been a huge help number two that's been awesome for me is I have lost 12 pounds, which is awesome. I know it's not a ton, but for me, it just feels really great. Sometimes I'm even lost to 14, and sometimes, you know, it goes down to 12, between 12 and 14 pounds, because the scales kind of do this. So it's okay if your scales are doing this. I feel good, I'm feeling better in my body, I feel a little bit more energy. My surgeries, like I said, have put a little bit of kink in it, but I'm still doing really good. So I just want to quickly tell anybody out there, if you still want to be involved in this, this is how you do it. Number one, you make yourself a vision for your life, and watch the vision board video to learn more about that. Number two, start having some kind of daily workout and breathing. Either, even if you can't get outside, even if you have to open up a window and breathe in for and out for and visualize during that time. So first of all, I thank Heavenly Father for everything that I am grateful for, starting with inside of me and spiraling out to kids and experiences and the world we live in. All of those things. Flood yourself with things that you are grateful for. Number four, you start to visualize. Visualize all the things that are on your vision board as if they've already happened. 
Like visualize them clearly, how it will feel when you walk into your house and when you look around and see the people that you love and smiling back and forth. I visualize experiences, moments, meetings. I visualize what my life will look like. And I do that at the end of my walk. I stretch, I tell Heavenly Father again, I'm so grateful for everything that you've given me and please accept my faith that I'm having for this vision I have for myself and lead me where you need me to go and I end it there. Those few things of doing that will help you immensely. So if you are willing to take this mommy makeover challenge with me, there's still a few more weeks left. I will let you know when that's up and done. But for now, continue with that. Even if you're only involved for three or four weeks, let me know by email emailing nenfam with two m's n-e-n-f-a-m-m -M at gmail.com and tell me about your experience and how it's helped you and where your heart has changed or your body has changed or your mindset has changed or anything that you've done for the better for yourself and then you can be entered to win the one thousand dollar wardrobe giveaway mm -hmm.